what is preventing most people from moving in the direction that they want to move is a lack of discipline. And no one wants to hear that answer. It's the harshest answer. Yeah. This is hard work, it's every day. When they see that word discipline, it's actually slapped in the face because they know it's true. If you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it, that's the most powerful thing in the world. What are you gonna get without discipline? Are you gonna be in good physical shape without wow. discipline? Are you gonna be financially successful without discipline? Are you gonna, are you gonna become more intellectually powerful without discipline? You're gonna see me for who I am because I need to change who I'm not. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. If you want to make progress in your life, you got to have discipline. Discipline equals freedom. You want freedom in your life? You want to achieve what it is you want to achieve? How do you do that? You do it through discipline. You do it through hard work. You do it by knowing what it is you're supposed to do and, and then doing actually it. doing it. <laughs> yeah. You have to face yourself. What am I going to do today to change what I see in this mirror? It starts with yourself, man. Through hard work, you can outwork anybody. Like I'm going to be extreme in my discipline. Somebody asked me that on social media. How do you master discipline? I'm like, you don't. You don't. You keep working at it though. Every day. Yes. It takes power. It takes effort. It takes discipline to break the old you. What gives you confidence not being afraid is overcoming the fear. There's no one in the world that enjoys taking criticism. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. The tougher things you go through, the more confidence you're going to have, the more confidence you have, the better you're going to get. But I'm going to work and try and make myself better. And that's the mentality you have. A lot of us who are afraid of something, we allow our minds to choose the path of least resistance so we go a different route. What I did was what I knew how to do, which was work. You figure it out by going inside yourself. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. That's what I'm gonna do. When I was a little tiny kid, you know, five, six, the only thing I can remember was wanting to be some kind of commando. There was no, there was not any question for me. I knew what I wanted to do. I never thought about quitting at any mm, moment in really? time. SEAL teams is, is going to war. That's what we do. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior, and I would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than the normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. And, and the fact of the matter is, bullets don't have your name on it. Bullets say to whom it may concern. And the bullet doesn't care who you are. They don't care how much training you've had. They don't care how well prepared you are. And if it's your day, it's your day. And so I think once you get to a point where you recognize and accept the fact that you could, you could die, then you can move past that. That's a really high percentage of people that quit, but there's also people that fail. We have the ability to go in such a space. If you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're gonna die. I worry about missing out on opportunities that I have mm. because I got friends that will never get the chance to execute on opportunities because they didn't come home. And, and that's literally what I told my guys was we've, we've crossed the line and there's no, there's no possible way to replace or describe or overcome the amount of just heart-wrenching sadness that you feel when you lose a teammate. I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know what to say. First time, second time, third time. What I did 
was, and I told my guys, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. The only thing that I know to do is to go back to work. And I do know this, if Mark was here, he would want us to go back to work. And so we're gonna lock and load our weapons and we're gonna go do what we do. What most people fail to realize is that pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. There is no path in life without pain. Whatever it is that you're going after, whoever it is that you've been destined to become, you cannot have it. You will not become it without pain. You will face challenges and difficulties and giants regardless if you are single, if you are married, if you are a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home father, if you are an entrepreneur, if you're working a nine to five, if you're an educator, if you are an athlete, if you are a musician, a singer, a producer, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are doing, pain is inevitable. If I'm gonna hurt like this, if I'm gonna bleed like this, if I'm gonna cry like this, let me cry because I'm in the best shape of my life. Let me cry because I'm conditioned to weather the uphill war. Let me cry because I'm building my relationship. I'm building my business. I'm building my legacy. Let me cry because it hurt, but there is a reward on the other end of my pain. Let me cry tears because I passed the test, because I gave it everything I had. Choose your heart. Everything in life comes with hardship. Make a decision. At some juncture, you will encounter pain. And the moment that you get acquainted with pain, you get acquainted with hardship. You realize that no matter what you do, no matter how much you study, no matter how much you plan, you will not be able to avoid a measure of pain. I don't care what it is, losing weight, I don't care what it is, a, a new eating paradigm, a new relationship paradigm, new thoughts, new behaviors. It doesn't matter what you're after, what you're looking to become. If you don't go to the gym, it's gonna hurt you. If you go to the gym, it's gonna hurt you. Your muscles are gonna tear. But on the other side of that pain, there is a reward. There isn't any regret. You won't regret taking care of your body. On the other side of making those healthy decisions, there is a reward. It's the reward of discipline. It's the reward of longevity. It's the reward of influence. It's the reward of power. Do you want results? Do you want a reward? Or do you want regrets? The decision is yours. It's all hard, so choose your heart. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. Pick your pain. Everybody's got a plan until life knocks them out because we weren't ready for the pain. And when the pain came, we did not process it. Processing pain is a skill set you've got to acquire. It's a type of currency. If you want the future, if you want next level, if you want tomorrow, if you want to manifest, if you want this thing, I don't care what it is, then you're going to have to get acquainted with pain. The pain of discipline, the pain of growth, the pain of learning, the pain of giving, the pain of forgiving, it all hurts. So pick your pain, choose your heart. Because at some juncture in life, at some corner you're going to turn, you are going to encounter pain. And you've got to process that pain well. Hear me when I say it, pain is unavoidable. It's hard to let go of the past. It's hard to give sometimes of your time, your talent, and your treasure. It's hard to balance work life. It's hard to acquire new skills. It's hard to be stagnant. It's hard to be a workhorse. It's hard to be lazy. It's hard to learn how to manage and cultivate relationships. It's hard to learn from your experiences. It's hard to turn your mess into your message. It's all hard. It's hard to hold on. It's hard to let go. But there's a reward on the other end of many of these hardships. You better choose reward or regret. There is always reward and regret attached to every decision that you make. Hope. Hold on. Pain ends. Pain 
does have an expiration date. And when that pain ends, another one will surface, but you will be strong enough because you endured the current pain well. Everybody wants resurrection, but nobody wants the pain of dying to themselves. There's a pain that hurts you, and there's a pain that changes you. So today, all I want you to do is make a decision to choose your heart. Motivation gets you going. Discipline, commitment, strong habits is what gets things done. Right? It's, very, it's all up here. Whoa, I feel good. But when it comes time to bring it into practice, grounded action is what gets things done. When you have built a habit, it's ingrained in your nervous system in such a way that the brain doesn't even have to consider whether or not it'll get done. It just gets done because you committed. Commit once. This is important. You guys need to write this down. Commit once. You don't need to commit more than once. You commit once to the thing that you're going to do, and then you do it every single day. So whatever it is that you're trying to achieve in life, the critical component is getting things done, and getting things done in a systematic way. Building the character that's associated with getting things done in a systematic way requires that you become Discipline. Oftentimes people will come to me for advice on fitness, on building their businesses, and their relationships, whatever the case may be, and often the place that they're dropping the ball is in bad habits or not building productive habits. Because it's very difficult to just get up and change your life, just change the way you do things. People like to say that all the time, hey just stop doing this or start doing that. They like to give advice, but the the underlying factor is that our, our friend, our individual, whoever's asking the question, is not disciplined enough to actually put that thing in action, get that thing done. So the thing that I have always told my students and my clients is to start with a small win. Begin with something small. So for example, if you want to lose weight, I often tell people, just start walking every single morning. Don't worry about counting calories. Don't worry about complex workout ideas. Don't worry about anything that anyone is selling you. Just get up and walk every morning, right? Now, it's not the walking that's actually gonna make that person successful. Now, it will add to your success because getting up and walking fresh air and, and exercise is going to support you in losing weight. But we all know that there's far more factors to consider. But what it will do is create the virtue of discipline, commitment. The fact that that small win associated with getting up every single morning is under your belt, you're going to feel the courage, the confidence, and you will have the ability to begin adding other things to your ability to, to grow stronger. So now that you know, it's been 60 days, 90 days, and it's like you got that pattern down pat. You get up every morning, you just walk, that's it. You don't think about it, it's become a habit you now can use that tool of creating habits and instilling discipline with the next one. Basically what you're doing, and I've mentioned this in videos before, is you're getting comfortable with discomfort. You've gotta get comfortable in getting uncomfortable. And the minute that discomfort begins to woo you, you are no longer in control. Now the circumstances are. So put yourself purposefully in uncomfortable situations. There's no virtue is developed in a vacuum. Essentially, no virtue is developed in the absence of the practice, the expression. You've got to do the thing to have the power. Otherwise, you would have reached. It's been 10 years. You're not, go you're not a goal person. And, I'll, and to be quite frank, it's difficult for even myself at times. If I don't have something nipping at my ass, no, why go after something? Right? You've got to really like, brainwash yourself to do that. Let's create a situation where you, you sink or swim. And you'll learn how to swim. You've got to place yourself in the midst of a storm, and it's got to be a self-created storm. Otherwise, you know, most people have to wait till the shit comes crumbling down before they, they take action in life. I'm inviting you to create a shit storm for yourself so that you will be motivated by the wolf crying at the door, by the dog nipping at your ass, by the fire under your ass. But the thing is that information, ideas, 
do not help transform a person. Because if it did, we would all be jacked, right? I mean, how many bodybuilding channels do you watch? How many books have you read? How many magazines have you read? How many TV shows? How many seminars? How much have you bombarded your mind with ideas about strength and fitness? And you know what? It doesn't mean that you actually got it, right? Because ideas don't help people. What helps people, and this is why I talk the way I do, is showing them a way that perhaps they could transform their character. Who they are is more important than what they know and what they do. The way they see themselves, their character. It literally requires a brainwashing of yourself to see yourself in a different light. Affirmations, visualization, meditation. These are all forms of mental transformation. See, we have these experiences in our life that are, that are not fun, that are difficult. You know, you lose a loved one, you lose a limb, you get really sick. See, these are easy ones, but you're gonna experience it in life. You're gonna experience some tough, tough I mean, you can, lose, you can lose your parents, you can lose your children. Like I said, you can lose your limbs, you could be flat, broke, and, and hungry. There are so many different experiences that, that you're probably going to experience in life. You know, getting in an accident, and, and there's so much. And each one of those, each one of those aren't arbitrary. Think about how bad it could possibly become. That is not arbitrary. It is purposeful. It is set there for your growth, right? That's what life is about. Life is engaging in all of those really difficult situations for your growth because always on the other end of that pain is a stronger version of yourself. That's why that pain is there. Like we weight train in the weight room, you know, it's very painful to the body. We subject our body to the pain of lift, waiting, uh, lifting weights in order to experience the growth that's on the other end of the pain. Life is that balance between catabolic and anabolic. Catabolic is when you're being broke the down. Anabolic is the bounce back associated with going through the circumstance. Go do something that forces you to look the ugliness in the face so that you can deal with it, so that you can grow past it, so that you become a stronger version of yourself. Every time you back away from any of these challenges, these circumstances, these failures, there's no such thing as a failure, okay? You didn't lose that basketball game because you're a failure. You didn't drop out of school. You didn't have the experience that caused you to drop out of school because you're a failure. And those circumstances pose to you in order for you to grow stronger. Even if you fail and fail and fail and fail, you get knocked in your face 10 times. You're not a failure until you quit, mother I guarantee you that after 90 days of tiny wins and the revamping of your character, you will be the type of person that can get anything done at any time. And the long time perspective is going to be a successful one for you. Start small, have big, wins with these little things and then use that new version of yourself, that new character tool to attack bigger and more advanced things until you reach your goal. Good luck. Why is the truth so important? You have to have the truth to have a starting point and your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. We all look for toughness. We all want it, but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, you will not find it. The only way you find it is to drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Where you're drowning. And you say, you know what, man? That. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. It's in our head saying, you know what, man? Dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. You're wasting a bunch of percentage here. In this other 80% is suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt darkness and then a whole bunch of light but to get to this light you gotta go through all of this shit 
You're not succeeding. You're not achieving. It's because you're afraid to go in that dark place to find yourself. You're setting goals. You know you can reach. And when you do that, that fear, that insecurity, that doubt, that's where you grow. You must always set goals that you think you cannot achieve. And then there you get better. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, the amount of mental pain, of how many times you're going to have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. Every day, you must ask yourself, did I do enough? And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that shit we have nowadays, your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, you're going through death, real life shit. You can't Google that shit, man. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain and your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways and it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're fucked. You gotta tell your brain where you wanna go and how you wanna go and how you wanna get there. You gotta control it. If not, it's over. It's over. All I knew back then was hard work. You gotta work hard. You gotta work hard. I can't get this paragraph. I can't remember what the fuck's in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again. Still not getting it. Read again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And that's how I started learning. I realized if I keep going back and going back and going back until the shit just becomes, your mind will say, fuck, okay, we're gonna figure it out. It'll find a way. Because he is not going to stop. It's not like, I'm gonna try one more time. No, alarm clock goes off, boop, we're going back. I can't read right, we're going back. I gave myself no way out, and my mind realized that. They said, okay, we're gonna adapt and overcome now. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself wherever it is, and you become that. I became hell and that became my new norm. I gave myself no way out. There was nothing outside these walls of hell, nothing. I watched this segment on TV about these guys going through Navy SEAL training and I couldn't even, I, I wasn't a great swimmer, I was afraid of the water, all this crap, man. I saw these guys just quitting. But at the very end, it says 22 guys, this commanding officer's up there and he gives this great speech. So I started visualizing me being the 23rd guy sitting there with these guys. I said, man, if I could feel that, that would change my life. And what was that feeling you wanted so bad? Respect, accomplishment? No. Victory. I wanted to win. Not like beat somebody else. It wasn't about that. I, I, I just wanted to go the distance. Everything in my life, when something got hard, I quit. I had to work harder than you, so I quit. Like, man, if I could just go that distance, that extra mile, to just go, it's just to finish. I want to finish. I want to feel victory. And victory for me wasn't winning, it was just finishing. So I said, you know what? If I could feel like these guys feel, it would change my life. And literally, I started feeling victory just by putting myself in the battle. 
I started realizing, man, just by going to war with myself every day and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles, now we can move from there. If you look at it as, man, I'm broken and I'm still here, and I'm fighting, and I'm gonna find a way to get through this, because I have no other place to go, it gives you a lot of power. And no one really finds themselves without going through trials, tribulations, suffering, accountability. And accountability is suffering. Being accountable every fucking day for doing right, for yourself, for the people next to you, it's miserable. The more I did this, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized, fuck these Navy SEALs, man. These guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I had no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. And your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. That's where he came from. He came from all these fucked up obstacles and now he's there. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. I've come to learn that there's a huge difference between failing and failure. Failing is like stubbing your toe. You know, it happens. It's, it's, a, it's a verb, you know? It's just something you do. But failure is a noun, it's an identity. It's a place of where you stay. And I failed a lot, a lot, a lot along the way. But I was never a failure because I kept trying, I kept doing it. And I understood over time that my value wasn't representative of the things that worked or didn't work. It was so frustrating because I was chasing an idea of value, not understanding that I was value to begin with. A crumpled up $20 bill is still $20. It doesn't lose its value when it's beaten up. You have a right to what you're feeling, but just because you feel it doesn't mean it's real. I'm gonna acknowledge that I don't like this, but I'm also gonna acknowledge that I don't wanna stay in this feeling because if I already have to go through this diabetes, I already have to go through being different, I already have to go through feeling like a monster, I don't have to beat myself up in my own head. If you get a flat tire on the side of the road, you don't set your car on fire, you deal with the flat tire, but that's what I felt like I was doing and a lot of people do. A lot of people set the car on fire instead of addressing the main issue, they build upon it and make it worse. How can I become more than what's happened to me? How can I become more than this circumstance that I hate, but how can I not let that hate towards a circumstance I can't control? Control me, control me, control me. You know, sometimes we, we get addicted to this, like, making everything beautiful, making everything, like, amazing. And sometimes we have to be real. Some situations do suck. They do. And we have to allow them to suck and not invalidate the fact that it does suck. My job is to not let my mind take over. And that's when I win and when I lose and everything in between. You have a choice between what you think and what you do. And that choice is everything. Motivation comes after action, okay? So stick with me, motivation comes after action. The question is not how do you develop the motivation to keep going? The real question is how do you develop the discipline to do the stuff you need to do even when you don't feel like doing it? Floss one tooth, go to the gym and lift one weight one time. Then you can stop, then you can go home, then you can stop. More than likely, because you already got there, because you already started, you're going to finish. Getting there is the majority of the issue. The discipline to start, that's what you need. The motivation to keep going comes after the action to start. I could ask anyone watching, do you need to work? And more than likely, everyone would probably say yes. And I will say, no, you don't. That's a lie. That's a lie that you're telling yourself. You don't need to work. You could be homeless. You could give up everything you own and you could live on the streets. You could. 
So it's not a need, it's a want. It's a desire to not be homeless. It's a desire to maintain the life that you have. And if we have an ability to turn a desire into a necessity like we do with our job, you have the same ability to turn a desire of fitness goals into a necessity to do it regardless of how you feel. So on those days you don't feel like it, if you know you need to, you have to. You teach best what you need to learn most. That has stuck with me for so long. And I've kind of built on that concept of the answers you need are in the problems you haven't solved yet. For me, I needed to learn how to, how to validate myself. I needed to learn how to see value in myself when I saw myself as broken. I needed to learn how to, you know, lift weights thinking that I couldn't. And now I teach people that stuff. That's my job. You know, what I teach now is what I needed to learn most back then. And it's so crazy how the problem becomes a solution. What held you back is what can push you forward. A lot of people could benefit if they really looked at the problems they're facing right now. There are massive solutions within those problems that can take you to a new level of life if you look at them from a different perspective. Focus on what you can control. That, that concept has reduced my stress, has reduced my anxiety, has reduced so much unnecessary worry in my life. You know, so many people be like, oh, Chris, it's easier said than done. Absolutely, that's true. But it's better done than said. If you focus on what you can control, you reduce the energy investment into things you can't. What if, what if, what if? What if I get fired? What happens if my partner leaves me? What happens if my business fails? What if, what if, what if? Okay, you can't control the what ifs. You can't control external circumstances. What I can control is my thoughts, my behaviors, my actions. I can create a plan. I can create an action set, I can do those things, that's what I can control. So when I stop focusing on living life in the back seat and take the driver's wheel of responsibility, and not just responsibility, but responsibility, the ability to respond to anything that happens to me, my life got a lot better. So now I choose to focus on what I can control, not what I can't. I've always wanted to gain the upper hand of situations, and it wasn't until I matured to understand that the only upper hand that matters is having the upper hand over yourself. And I was like, how do I, how do I gain the upper hand over myself? How do I gain the upper hand over a situation I have no control of? Well, you go back to that concept that I discussed focusing on what you can control. From there, I built five other concepts, and I built this book to help people simply navigate the struggles of life by internalizing things instead of blaming the outside world, giving you concepts that can help you do something about it. Focus on what you can control that so you don't create cages around your lifestyle and you learn how to navigate the true emotions and feelings so that you can have the upper hand always over a situation, even, even if it's unfavorable. I know everyone is busy, but there is nothing more important than making sure mentally that your mental health is good and making sure you're living your life on your terms and not just falling in line with what you think should be done. I can't really prove that you're supposed to be something like you should be something, but I can say that with choice and effort, you can go really damn far. Do you have the strength and the wisdom to push forward. It's difficult for many of us. It's hard to let go when you work so hard to get what you have gotten along the way. But here we are. We must understand within ourselves that every challenge requires focus, requires faith, requires dedication and discipline. There's no reason for you to be down on yourself. There's no reason for you to feel sad about yourself. In reality, we are so much more. So keep looking up. 
and know there are going to be many days that you will have to face things that are not going to be what you want it to be there are going to be many days when you just don't feel you have the strength to carry on there are going to be many days when you just want to give up but you know that you cannot all you want to do is complain about it crying about it wondering about it hoping that somebody will jump on that misery train with you and take a ride and all you got to do is just say not today complaining nah i'm planning i'm planning for the attack i'm planning to do better i'm planning to go up planning to do what's right for me this is another chapter in your life this is another testimony that you will share that you will let others know that yes I've been knocked down but when I got down I knew what I had to do to get back up again I had to believe I had to have faith and I had to trust again let it be known that you are the best and the best knows believes and trusts that they will get up again this is the time to understand what you are dealing with what you are facing what you must do to move forward again and do you you can't change people you can't make people do what you want them to do everybody's not going to listen to you everybody doesn't want what you want so we can complain all we want Sometimes we just got to stay in our lane and go our own way. But as long as you have a beating heart and your lungs are functioning and your eyes are open, you will get back up again. You will press on and you will live strong and you will fight until there's nothing else left to fight for and just keep it moving your business it's work your life it's work your purpose it's work escape find a place that no one else can find you be the best of yourself and never give up find a place within yourself that no one else can touch find a place of peace and harmony be able to recognize your purpose be able to believe once again in you when no one else believes in you be the person that believes in you yourself no one deserves to take that happiness from you don't give people that much power don't give negative energy that much power the best never quits the best knows how to get back up and rise again the best doesn't stay on the ground for too long because the best understands that even though you're down you must have the capabilities to get up work effort purpose will 
This is what is needed. This is how you get through it. But if you got a bunch of negative noise surrounding you, if you got a bunch of negative things happening around you, you'll never be able to see the promised land. You'll never be able to see the truth within yourself. Something knocked you down. Something held you back. Why did this happen? Was it supposed to happen? Why did you have to go through this particular fallback when you work so hard? Well, I'm here to let you know the best sometimes they do fall. But as long as you have a beating heart and your lungs are functioning and your eyes are open you will get back up again. Believe in yourself. Work towards the greatness that you have within you. Look up and see your true potential. See what you are capable of. Know what you are capable of. Fight for what you are capable of. This is the fight of your life. And you have to work. You have to trust it. You have to stand on it. You will not bow down. You will not give up. You will work. You will push. And you will give everything that you have. For today and for the rest of your life. Be productive. Be strong. And from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. Whatever industry you pick, if you outwork everybody, if you try to be a little smarter than everybody, if you try to be a better salesperson than everybody, if you try to be better prepared than everybody, you've got your best chance because if you don't do it and somebody else does, you know, I have the saying, work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. You know, work, mm -hmm. I actually work mm -hmm. like someone's spending 24 hours, working 24 hours to take it all away from you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of the way I look at it. What would you say is the number one reason why people fail? Lack of brains, lack of effort. Lack of brains, lack of effort. Yeah, they just, they don't do the work. They don't learn, you know. When you walk in the room, when you start a business and you start to talk about somebody, you're, you're never in a vacuum with no competition, you know, unless you're just extremely lucky. And if there's going to be competition, that means somebody else knows your business as well as you do when you get started. And if you walk into a competitive environment and they still know more about the business than you do and more about your customers, you're going to lose. But most people don't consider that. They don't do the work. They don't learn more about their industry. They don't know even about their business. I mean, and so you've got to put in the effort to know more about your industry than anybody else. Um, and that's, that's the brains part and that's the effort part as well. Because look, if you're competing with me, you, you better know what you're doing. Otherwise, I'm going to kick your ass. You know, and you're not going to outwork me. And so, you know, the combination is usually what kills businesses early on more than anything. You could, within a five, 10 minute, minute interview, say, this dude's not gonna make it as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can typically tell, right? I can tell um, by, by um, their passion, I can tell by their focus, I can tell by their preparation. You know, there, there's a whole realm of things in any business. Here, you know, here's, here's the business you're in, and here's a thousand things that influence whether or not you're gonna be successful. You know, through my experience in businesses, I can put myself in his position and say, okay, here are 900 of the thousand things he has to be aware of, and then go through and ask. And by how many of those or her um, issues they've been able to address already, that kind of gives me a sense of how hard they're willing to work. You know, and I can tell by the questions they ask me. So all I have to do is say, okay, what do you want to know? And you know, when they start saying, what should I do? They ask you. Yeah, well, you know, and that's fine, right? And I want them to ask questions, but you know, people like to say, you know, the only stupid questions are the one you don't, ones you don't ask, and that's not right, right? Because the questions you ask tell me, tell whoever more about you than anything else you do. Because in particular, it tells me about your preparation. If you ask me questions about just basic things that you should have known and you should have down to a science, that's going to disqualify you almost more than anything. 
if you're not always learning if to this minute, if, if I'm not continuously learning, if I'm not just absorbing as much as I can absorb, someone else is going to kick my ass, right? So you talk about paranoia. The, the greatest source of your paranoia should be knowledge. If someone else knows more than you do, and if you're not learning, if you don't know the learn, if you don't know how to learn, if you don't have a thirst for learning and acquiring information, you're, you're SOL. Do you think there needs to be a healthy level of paranoia? Oh, absolutely. There needs to be. Oh yeah. I okay. mean, I always say, you know, for every one of my businesses, I, I said, what would I do to kick my own ass? You right. So whatever business you have, there's somebody trying to put you out of business. There's somebody trying to to take a bite out of mm -hmm. your business, mm -hmm. and it's better for you to figure out how they're going to do it rather than they do it. Um, and so yeah, that's being paranoid. And so you have to be paranoid. You have to anticipate other people's next moves, and you can't ever you know downplay the competition. I was at a business plan competition this morning for at a college, and they were kind of being dismissive of the competition. And so you can't ever do that. You know, they're out there trying to take you down and they're not just going to sit still. And if you're good, really, really good, you're going to inspire them to work even harder, faster, better. And so you have to be, you know, very self-aware of what you're good at and what other people are good at. And, you know, a healthy dose of paranoia makes a big difference. I mean, it's very helpful. Let's transition to a different subject with college. Uh -huh. You went to IU, yep. right? Now, you got a lot of people that uh, say, uh, forget about school, you know, they're drop idiots. out of school. They're, they're idiots. So you think they're idiots. They're idiots. Tell me why. Um, if you're going to have and run a business, if you don't understand accounting, you're already behind the eight ball. Can't you hire a guy that's, that knows how to but run accounting? But then they, they still have to communicate to you. Your accountant might tell you, you're profitable, but your cash is going down. You know, not understanding um, a breakdown. And, and when you don't... Do you think you need college to learn that? Yeah, I think you do, right? Because it, it may not, for some people, look, if you're so self-motivated that you can take an online course in accounting and teach yourself everything, you're way ahead of the game anyways, but most people aren't. I don't care if you go to a community college and take accounting and, and spend 99 bucks for the class. Just, you know, spending the money forces you to be more obligated to do it. But accounting, finance, lesser extent marketing, sales if the school offers that, these are all, the, that's the language of business. And so while it's possible to teach yourself these things and while it's possible to hire them, mm -hmm. when you're starting your own company, you don't want to have to spend money hiring an accountant. Well, let me take that. If you've gone through all these classes, you probably don't have to hire a lawyer to incorporate, right? You can probably figure it out yourself. And so your cost of opening up a business drops, but even more important than all that, that's, that's the blocking and tackling. That's the language of business. You know, the thing I learned at Indiana that was more important than anything else, I learned how to learn. And learning became far more important to me because the one certainty in business is that it's always going to be changing. When you have fallen, when you have made a mistake, the worst thing you can do is criticize yourself. At the end of the day, life can be very painful. We can experience loss and worry and the insomnia of reoccurring heartbreak and hardships. It is inevitable. It is self-compassion that gives us the power to face our failures, to face our fears, to face our insecurities, to face what we don't like about ourselves and come out on top. When you're down, find a way to get up. I've been there. I go through it like anybody else. But I have a job to do in this world, and so do you. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. Evaluate where you are. Look at it. Assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What role did you play? All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. If you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. I'm telling you from personal experience, I know what my life was like when I put in 55. I know what it was like when I didn't try. I know what my life was like when I didn't care. I know what my life was like when I didn't have any dreams or any goals, like, like I didn't want anything. I know what my life was like. Now I'm putting in 120, baby. You put in 120. Not only does it affect your life, 
It affects your family's life. It affects your friend's life. It affects your community's life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to get from where you are. I'm challenging you to stop settling. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to stop accepting the life that was given to you. I'm challenging you to give 120%. Are you hearing me? Trying is not good enough. Trying is not going to get you there. We need potential. We need application. We need dedication. We need motivation. We need discipline. We need to understand that work must be applied. And even when you don't want to do it, find a way to do it anyway. I'm coming back and I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. If you are going to win the fight for your future, then you are going to have to master self-compassion. Face the conflict. Embrace rather than avoid challenges. And you don't give up on yourself. Do not give up on yourself. When you find yourself criticizing yourself, negatively comparing yourself to others, try to find inspiration in their successes and strengths instead of feeling threatened. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. Everybody gets knocked down. No matter how tough you think you are, you're going to fall. And when you fall, sometimes you fall real hard. But that ground is a hard surface. And I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to move because you're laying on it. So you need to rise up and you need to rise above it and you need to start moving. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you're under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Stop half doing stuff. Stop putting forth 50% effort, 60 percent Look, stop. Do it right or just don't do it at all. Are you hearing me? Do it right. There's a lot of people walking around today, they have unchecked rage, unchecked aggression, unchecked anxiety, fear, insecurity. You're going to have to care enough about yourself to face it and find a resolve. You got to find out what's the next things you need to be doing. How are you going to push it to that level and go beyond it? How are you going to maximize your time? How much energy are you going to put into this craft? Everything you have, everything you are, everything you're doing, like it's, it's 78. And what I need you to do is I need you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, come on, quit, stop playing. I deserve to see what my life would look like if I gave 120%. Stay dedicated. You've got to keep on pushing forward. You've got to keep on fighting the good fight. You've got to put aside the excuses because excuses won't lift you up. Excuses won't give you the power that you truly need. You've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not gonna let this get me down. I'm not gonna let this destroy me. When you get knocked down, how long are you gonna stay down? When you lose your job, when you lose that loved one, regardless if it's your husband, your wife, your child, whatever it is, do you have the ability to go through the hurt and the pain of that loss? Regardless of what you're going through, the best time you know that you are strong is when you're at the weakest point of your life. I want you to see yourself in your mind's eye and say to yourself, I love myself unconditionally and I forgive myself. If I knew better, I would have done better. To win the war for your future, then you are going to have to master the muscle of self-compassion. When you are so far down that hole, you looking up and you don't see no light but yet you know there's an end to this darkness. That's when you'll find out just how strong you really are. Just keep moving forward. If you think that you're going through something so bad right now, wait until tomorrow if tomorrow comes for you. Look at the person next to you. 
Look at people all over the world if you ever come in contact with certain individuals and ask yourself, are they going through a lot more than what I'm going through? Because honestly, there are always going to be people that are going through a lot more than you're going through right now. Remember the past, but do not live in the past. Every mistake you have made up until this very moment, forgive yourself. With forgiveness comes freedom. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go. And move so you can grow. So you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? This is a process. And you have to hurt just a little bit so you can understand what it means to be strong. So don't give up on your hopes. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on yourself. We always say we're going to pursue our dreams one day. We're going to start that business one day. We're going to travel the world one day. We're going to get in better shape one day. It's time to step into the fire and step out of your comfort zone as the legends before you did, rising above the ashes of those who paved the way for you to be here today. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Today is your day. This is day one. Day one of the rest of your life. Is it one day or is today your day one? In other words, how do you live? What is your mentality? I had a dream of playing in the NBA, but I had to become an NBA ball player. I dreamed of being a Hall of Fame motivational speaker, but I had to become a Hall of Fame motivational speaker. Your dreams are no good if you're not willing to become. That one day won't happen until you become. And when I talk about become, you must become legit. You can't fake this thing. The one thing that you must understand is that you don't get any do-overs. Once your day ends, that's it. So what option do you need to commit to taking today? When you set a goal, there needs to be a sense of urgency. You got to pursue. You get in that ocean and the shark pursues. You go in the jungle, the lion pursues. So can I ask you a question? Are you a dreamer or are you a chaser? How long have you been thinking about this one day? How long have you been talking about this one day? How long are we going to talk about it? How long are we going to dream about it? How long are we going to fantasize about it? How long? You tell me. It takes grit. It takes sacrifice. It takes time and energy. It takes extreme focus. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I want to be that voice for you to stop dreaming and start chasing, start pursuing, but most importantly, you got to become. Today is your day. Today is day one. See, a lot of people always talk about one day it's going to happen. One day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to do that. So that's my question for you right now. Is it one day or day one? You're going to follow one line or the other. Is it one day or day one? Here's the truth. The doers do and the dreamers dream. Hear me clearly. The doers do and the dreamers dream. So the question is, are you a doer or a dreamer? You've got to put some action behind your words. Your wins aren't always going to be big. In most instances, they come in small increments. Just like our days come in 24 hour increments, your wins will come in increments. We all have the same amount of time. We all get 24 hours in one day. Some people invest their time and some people waste their time. Don't stop, my friend. 
You see, we all start out as dreamers. There's nothing wrong with being a dreamer. We all start out as dreamers. But one day, you must start to pursue. So if it's going to happen for you one day, why can't today be day one? My daddy would tell me every day, go get it, son, go get it. Go get it, son, go get it. And I had to make a decision to stop dreaming and start pursuing. The biggest mistake you can ever make is to assume that you have tomorrow. Do you realize that the clock is always ticking? Yes, the clock is always ticking. Time stops for no one. Time does not bow to you. Time does not owe you anything. It's up to you to understand the value of your time. It's up to you to understand the value of this very moment. You must wake up every morning and pull and dig every day for that one day to show up. And don't you stop pulling. Don't you stop digging until it shows up. I believe if you pull on your dream every day, they will eventually manifest. You got to pull on your dream. It's like a game of tug of war. You got to dig in, you got to grab that rope, and you got to pull. There is no way around actually doing the work. If there's something you want to do, if there's something you want to be, today has got to be your day one. Today is here. Today you're breathing. Today is your opportunity to pursue your vision with everything you've got. Whatever you are pursuing, you need to become it. You need to walk like it. You need to talk like it. You need to perform and produce like it. You've got to get in action now. You've got to make a move now. You don't need everything that you think you need to get started. This is your life. This is your dream. This is your future. How long are we going to talk about one day? This is the day your life really begins. This is day one. Day one of the rest of your life. See, your mama can't do it for you. Your daddy can't do it for you. Your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, they can't do it for you. This is all on you. So are you wishing or hoping that you will succeed? Or are you demanding that you succeed? It's time for you to be bold. It's time for you to truly understand the value of what you bring to the world. I don't want you just to chase your dreams. I want you to catch them. But you got to start chasing right now. In other words, you got to pursue success. Pursue success. You got to pursue. Discipline sounds hard, but it's only hard when you don't want the reward bad enough. When you want something bad enough, you will wake up early. When you want something bad enough, you will pass on hanging out with your friends. When you want something bad enough, you will not back down. See, you, you pull on your hopes with your daily efforts. Pull on your dreams with your daily efforts. But who do you need to become for this manifestation to be real? For this manifestation to be legit? You don't have to prove anything to anyone but yourself. So my final question for you, is it one day or day one? Is it one day or is it day one? Is it one day or is today day one?